This podcast is presented by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, safer, healthier people. The idea of using disease as a weapon gained a new level of sophistication in the early 1930s as nationally funded research programs on biological warfare were developed. The Japanese had a very active offensive biowarfare research program which included a battalion known as 731. In their program, the Japanese conducted experiments on humans using 15 to 20 different disease-causing agents, with anthrax being one of their favorites. Allied prisoners of war and innocent Manchurian civilians in nearby villages provided an almost endless supply of experimental subjects. When word of Unit 731 leaked to the West, Allied forces began their own programs, concerned that Japan and possibly Germany would gain a military advantage in biowarfare research. On the third day after the exposure, the casualties begin. Dead sheep can be seen further down the line. It is, of course, necessary to confirm that they've died of anthrax. In 1942, on Grenyard Island off the coast of Scotland, the British conducted their first scientifically controlled biowarfare field trials. Scientists exploded anthrax bombs near immobilized sheep to determine if the spores would survive an explosion and retain the ability to infect anyone nearby. Test results showed that anthrax could in fact be effectively dispersed by explosive devices and could also remain viable in the soil for decades. This brought home the realization that if an anthrax bomb were dropped on a city like London, the results could have been catastrophic. Grenyard Island was declared off-limits until it was decontaminated in the 1980s. It's now safe for both humans and animals. Like our allies, the United States responded to the perceived threats from Germany and Japan. In 1943, we began an offensive biological program with a modest research and development facility at Camp Dietrich, which is now Fort Dietrich, Maryland. By the end of the program, we had weaponized a total of seven incapacitating or lethal human agents, including anthrax. In 1969, Richard Nixon renounced the use of biological weapons for the United States. I have decided that the United States of America will renounce the use of any form of deadly biological weapons that either kill or incapacitate. President Nixon visited Fort Detrick on the 25th of November, 1969. I remember that date quite well because following his announcement of taking munitions and beating him to plowsheds, we all lost our job. And that was a very traumatic experience. But following his presidential announcement on the, this date, uh, the, the entire United States offensive program on biological warfare came to a close within two years. We destroyed all of our seed stocks. We destroyed all of our production material at Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And we completely got out of the biological warfare business. Even at its peak, the U.S. offensive program paled compared to the Soviet Union's. The Soviets had a massive, extensive, sophisticated, top-secret program which employed tens of thousands of scientists and engineers in numerous research and production facilities. The Soviets signed the Biological Warfare Convention in the 1970s, and yet their program continued uninterrupted and, in fact, intensified. Our worst fears were confirmed in 1979 when an accidental release of anthrax occurred at a biological research facility in the town of Sverdlovsk. Much of our recent knowledge about their joint military and civilian program comes from a Soviet defector, Dr. Ken Alibek, formerly known as Dr. Kenachin Alibekov. He was the deputy director of BioPreparat, a cover organization for their civilian bioweapon and production facilities. Although we had suspected for years that they had continued their offensive program, some of the information he provided was a real wake-up call for the United States. 
Prior to the Gulf War, the intelligence community suspected that the Iraqis had done research on anthrax, but they didn't know just how extensive their program was. So as a precautionary measure during the war, about 150,000 U.S. service members were vaccinated against anthrax. And more would have been immunized if the war hadn't ended so quickly. After the war, the Iraqis admitted to producing and weaponizing anthrax, although the weapons were never used. This past decade, anthrax moved from being an agent of concern for biological warfare to the top of the threat list for terrorism. The Am Shurikiyam Truth Cult in Japan, which released the nerve agent Sarin from the Tokyo subway in 1995, allegedly made multiple unsuccessful attempts to infect people with anthrax. In October of 2001, the United States experienced anthrax attacks using powder sent through the United States Postal Service. Twenty-two people got sick and five people died from this attack. We learned just how dangerous anthrax could be. But there are things we can do. The best defense against a bioterrorism attack is knowledge and preparation. The webpage ready.gov is a good resource for preparedness information. It can be found at www ready.gov. Visit this webpage for detailed guidelines, facts, and what you can do to be ready in the event of an emergency. A small amount of time spent becoming informed, developing a plan, and preparing yourself against terrorist threats now can prove to be invaluable should the need arise. Don't be afraid. Be ready.